Welcome to Faces of DM, the DM TV segment uh, of DM25 YouTube channel uh, that focuses exclusively in, on our members. Uh, here you will meet and chat uh, with uh, activists and volunteers that joined our movement, uh, that felt inspired by our political messages and that uh, got engaged in projects in, on the ground. Uh, my name is Nadia, I recently joined DM25 staff to coordinate DM Voice, the culture and arts platform of DM25, and today I'm in Lagos with uh, Jonathan Silva. Hi. Hi. Uh, Lagos is in the Algarve region in Portugal, and uh, Jonathan is developing a project that uh, wants to protect the, the cliffs that we are seeing behind us uh, from construction. Hi, Jonathan, again. Uh, can you please tell us why did you join DM25? Hi, Nadia, thank you for having me. So I joined DM25 uh, for the, the main reason because I, I could relate very well with the message of creating a true democracy. I believe that if we don't act um, to shape the world to the public interest, that in inevitably other interests will shape the world, right? And those interests uh, most of the time do not have the will of the citizens uh, in mind. So yeah, I'm trying to make the world a better place by acting on what I feel should be acted upon. Can you tell us a bit about your story, your personal story? Yeah, sure. I grew up in Lagos. Uh, it was my, my hometown, right? And then uh, at 18, I left. I, I went to study. Then I worked in uh, financial uh, services for many years. I worked at the European Central Bank, an investment company in London. And during the pandemic, I returned to Lagos. I actually lost my job during the pandemic. Uh, I contracted COVID-19. Uh, I was one of the first people to contract uh, the disease here in Lagos. And I just felt that my life was at a new all-time low. But uh, that rock bottom became the solid foundation where, where I rebuilt my life on. Because while I was si sick, lying in my bed, I looked at the market and used my financial expertise to actually um, capitalize on unique trading opportunities that I saw. And then I used, used my profits to create a non-profit organization to actually create this uh, supportive community which uh, helped me so much while I was sick. And uh, how was Portugal when you came back? Uh, how do you feel politics are going? How economics are going in Portugal and especially in Lagos where you're living now? Sure. So Portugal is particularly affected by the pandemic because uh, tourism is a big industry in this country. And moreover here in the Algarve region where, where, where I grew up. And the, the pandemic is going on the second year. Uh, small businesses are closed. Uh, there's a curfew. You cannot go to another city during the weekend if you don't have a justifi justifiable reason. So all of this is affecting uh, small businesses. Only essential businesses can be open and only at limited times. So all of this is affecting the community as a whole. And the fact that the European Union is injecting massive amounts of uh, money and liquidity into the system, it's not sustainable, in my opinion, in the long run, because it will lead in inevitably to inflation. And inflation basically will punish uh, people through lower wages, because if they, if they have the same wages and prices go up, right, their standard of living come down. So that's what, what could happen in, in the medium long term. So people will be worse off. Yeah. And uh, how did you come uh, to know about this situation, about the cliffs in Lagos? Uh, thank you for that question. So I'm very passionate <laughs> about that issue. Uh, before I left Lagos, uh, all this area was open. There was no fences, so you could just walk and hike along the cliff. And I used to do that frequently with my friends, with my dogs. So it was a very enjoyable uh, path to walk. And when I arrived back from London, all of this area was actually fenced off, it was closed to the public. And after some investigation, I realized that it was actually owned by a private construction company there, a private company there. So all of these private companies basically fenced off this area from public access. And in my opinion, that, that is not the way it should be, because this, this space, not, not only is it a local landmark, it's a natural heritage that should be for the benefit of everybody. Everybody should be should have access to these cliffs, which are called Costa Doiro cliffs, all the way to Ponta de Piedad. They're world famous, and it's not fair that only private companies 
have, or private interests in this case, have access to them. So this campaign, basically, we seek to create a dialogue with the municipality to try to have an open discussion to what should be uh, done here to have a sustainable infrastructure. For example, we propose creating only a pedestrian path, creating also a hiking route along the cliffs in a safe way with, with, with uh, safeguards and all of that, and also a bike lane, maybe at the end of the cliffs, at the very end where the lighthouse is, create like an open a market for only local produce, a circular economy, greener economy, to incentivize and promote local, local businesses, and create an open um, terrace with only with a, a big sitting area so people can come, sit and enjoy this wonderful view that we're enjoying here as well. Yeah, and how is the DM25 helping you uh, putting this whole campaign into place? Can you tell us a bit about this? Yeah, sure. So my campaign got a, got a, a chosen, selected for the campaign accelerator program by the M25, and they are actually helping me with expertise. So I am in contact with a lot of experts from the M25. Some of them are in Greece, some of them are are in Porto, some of them are in in, in Belgium. So in all these countries, and they are providing all their expertise on how to best tackle the this situation and this campaign. Create a petition, create an open letter. Uh, uh, contact some influential people, so they're, they're helping me basically to grassroots and take this campaign off the ground. That's great. Yeah. And uh, do you have? A, uh, can you tell us a bit more about your NGO? So, what are the plans that you have for the NGO? I know you have a house that you are rebuilding. Me and some other local people, we got together and we created a non-profit organization. It's called Sol Image. Sol Image. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, in Portuguese, Associação Sem Fins Lucrativos, and basically we focus on two pillars, uh, community and nature. On the community pillar, uh, we seek to lift the spirits of those people in need and encourage the creation of this supportive community. We're doing that practically by creating a community center, and that community center will function as a hub where people can come and develop cultural, recreative, uh, recreational, educational, social initiatives. So we we imagine it to be a place where people come can come and discuss ideas, um, movie nights, for example, as well, cultural uh, gatherings, uh, art exhibits, all of that. And on on the nature uh, um, pillar, we focus on improving and preserving natural heritage sites like these for the benefit of the community. Okay. Coming back to the cliffs, uh, can you tell us a bit more how you got to know the situation? Sure. How could you find information on it uh, and uh, what uh, struck you on this? Sure. So when I arrived back from London, the first thing that I saw were the fences, right? So this area that I used to hike was close to the public. And then, blatantly, there was a big sign from the construction company saying that the land was for sale. And moreover, the sign said that the land was going all the way to the cliffs and the cliffs in Portugal this is public domain is maritime public domain so immediately I, I discussed with some of my colleagues from my nonprofit and and we we realized this is this is uh, actually uh, not correct if they put the sign up saying that they're selling something that's not theirs for sale and a few weeks later actually the sign was covered up I'm not sure if somebody did a complaint or, or something but the truth is that the sign was covered up realizing they, they must have realized that they could not sell something that was not theirs for sale and do you think your campaign can have any success well it depends on your on your definition of success right if if the municipality opens a dialogue and a public consultation and then we the people have a say in deciding what's going to happen in this area that's for me a success and it's a victory because then we get a vote in deciding what will happen to this area, right? If it in the end will be what we envision, that depends on the municipality and if it allows the people to have its voice. But what I know is that we, the people, we need to have an active civic voice. We need to have a duty to make our voice heard. I find it very interesting that you, at the same time, you are an activist, but with a background working with financial sure. institutions. So uh, can you tell us a bit uh, how you managed not to be influenced by the capitalist agenda and uh, where did you find the activism in yourself and when, when did that happen? Sure, very good question. So I believe when I was working at the European Central Bank I first realized that money uh, is nothing but a tool 
because the European Central Bank, for example, uses money as a tool to shape not only the economy, but shape society. It produces and prints, injects more money at will by buying uh, government debt, right? And in that way, they inject liquidity into a country. And then, in, 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 in return, they may make demands. For example, in 2008, they sent the IMF to Portugal and the Troika, right? And to impose austerity measures. So basically, they were giving that uh, liquidity to the country, but on the other hand, they were demanding austerity measures. So they were shaping society. So I realized that money can be a tool, uh, and it is nothing but a tool. It's an it's a, it's a imaginative construct of us. We give it value, but money is nothing but an imaginative construct. Uh, and then I realized that this tool can and should be used to shape society to benefit the community as a whole. And that's where this activism comes from. Um, to try and shape it to the public good and not only some a few private interests. Great. And uh, how do you think uh, DM25 can contribute, can keep on contributing to your own activism, to your projects? Uh... Yeah, sure. So my goal is to help create a better world um, through shaping it for the public good of the community, right? And DM can help by bring me in touch in contact and to a network of people and bouncing off ideas of other people who, who have similar uh, ideologies that's basically I, I believe the main the main benefit from being part of the M25 of having a community of people who want the best for the world thank you so much Jonathan to be on faces of DM I thank you very much yeah Nadia. and thank you for watching